with one of my children's favorite artists, Agnes Grabowska. Uh, Agnes, you are doing a sketch right now. What are you working on? Um, I was just trying to figure out what I want to draw. And since uh -huh. It's going to be a little faint. I think because Channel mm -hmm. the Hair, as I, we were just talking about my hair, I think I'm going to draw some Zatanna today from the new DC superhero. Group. Excellent. And that is one of the uh, projects that my kids and I enjoy together and love. So thank you. I love working on it. Now, I have to ask about some of your equipment here. You have, you brought your own pencil case. I did. Does this have a name? Is this a personal uh, favorite of yours? or? It's a mess. Uh-huh. In a very happy creative mess. I'm not very organized, so it's Most a happy Most creative mess. people are kind of, but this, what, what did you, have you been carrying that around or is that just your travel case? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. this is my travel case. Okay. It holds all my uh -huh. favorite tools to work with. And I actually have two of them. There's a second one at the table because I can never decide what I want to bring. So I bring a lot of random stuff just in case. I want to make sure I never forget anything. So I have two very messy, unorganized cases. And yeah, I but take you're them prepared. Around. That's the it's important exactly. thing here. Yeah. It's always best to be overprepared than underprepared. Now let's let's go before we get into the actual piece itself, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, where did you get your start? What inspired you to go down this crazy path of being an illustrator? <laughs> Little did I know what was yeah. going to be involved in my life. Uh -huh. um, so I guess it's kind of my origin story, but we'll do like a Cliff Notes really quick oh, version sure, yeah, of it. I, yeah. I am born in Poland, so I am Polish. I immigrated to Canada when I was about four or five. And when I immigrated, I actually did not know any English. I couldn't read, write, speak, nada. But I love cartoons. So right. when my mom was really busy, she just sat me down in front of the TV. Mm -hmm. And she realized that I love to sketch everything I saw on the TV. She's like, oh, OK. So you know what? I'm just going to let her keep watching. She mm -hmm. seems to be learning. So I actually started to learn English watching cartoons. <laughs> So you're picking up English and drawing at the same time exactly, from these cartoons. Exactly, because now yeah. I have to do something to keep myself occupied. Mm -hmm. And I loved cartoons. I loved animation from an early age. Now, what in, in anything specific in particular? Were you drawn to Hanna-Barbera or a different style of animation? What actually, were you watching? Actually, funny enough, this mm -hmm. is something I worked on. Actually, two projects I worked on. Mm -hmm. um, it was My Little Pony and Care Bears were the two things oh, okay. I was uh -huh. so obsessed with. Uh -huh. So now I'm learning English. But my mom's like, well, she used to start school and she can't really read or write. And it's really intimidating when you're already at a certain age that you should be reading and writing, but you can't. It's just not something that you know. So one of my mom's friends one day gave me a comic book. And they realized that I really wanted to know what the characters were saying. Right but I, I can't read. So that gave me the push I needed to start wanting to learn to read and write at a level that I could read these amazing comics that I am being given. Now, what comic was it? Do you remember? It was an X-Men comic. Sorry, DC. No, it's OK. It I mean, they're all paths. Eventually, you'll get here and you'll stay here. But uh, yeah, they're, they're all paths to yeah. the same place. So you got an X-Men comic, and that was the inspiration from that. And that really yeah. started it off. And then I started getting way into comics. And now this is where DC is about to come in. Yeah. One of my friends found this out. And she's like, hey, my brother's off in college. He has a comic collection in the basement. Uh-huh. So and you broke into her brother's stash of comics oh. that he had left behind. Oh, totally. And you got your, you got your covert comic book education from that. Uh-huh. And one of the first comics that uh -huh. I picked up, which caused me to become actually a DC fan from that point on, was a superhero girl comic. And on this cover is this girl. You don't see her face. You just mm -hmm. see this area. And she's holding a skateboard. Uh-huh. Oh, I so know here one. I am, little yeah. Agnes, going, who is this girl? I need to know who she is. Is that, is that an Adam Hughes cover? I'm trying to think who, who did that one. There's, yeah, there's the famous one with her holding the, the skateboard. Yeah. I'm totally blanking. I'm no, bad with people's okay. names. And if everything. I'm right, thank you. If I'm wrong, I apologize. We'll go look this up <laughs> Sorry, here. Sorry, guys, uh, but that comic changed my life. And it was just, it, did it speak to you about being the same age and that kind of angst and punkiness? Well, and she all? was a yeah. teenager. I was right. not even a teenager yet. I was still yeah. in grade school. There you go. Canadian came out of me because I say grade school. <laughs> but she was just the most fascinating person ever. Now, and I just wanted to get to know her. 
Now, so read, you started I've drawing, drawing. We should get into where you went from there. So you yeah. have a childhood love. You're doing it all the time. Yep. When did you get the idea that maybe this could be something you could do for a living and that this might mean something? Actually, not till... That was Tuesday. No, I'm sorry. I, I realized I how much oh. I hated animating. <laughs> really? Okay, so you tried to go into animation. I did. I uh -huh. actually went to school for both 3D and traditional animation because uh -huh. I loved art and I yeah. loved animating. I learned to speak English. But now uh, <laughs> I really hated animating. Well, I know you work on a lot of animated related projects, but there is also something beautiful about your artwork where it sings with the colors of original animation cells. That each of those panels that you do are really bright and have a yeah. lot of life in them. And I think I see now that some of that is from just the love of the animated medium in general. Yeah, um, I just always loved it. And I just always mm -hmm. wanted to create stories. The thing I knew earlier on yeah. is I wanted to be a storyteller. Right. And if I can't do an animating, because I absolutely hate it, it's super tedious, just not for me, how can I tell stories? And you like to tell a story faster than a three-year production process and exactly. get those out. Now, look, you have young fans. You have young people I know who watch your work. Um, do you get a sense of sort of, I don't know, joy or vindication from having been a little girl who needed comic books to branch the, gra uh, the, the gap of literacy, and we have young readers who are learning how to read from the first time from comic books that you're working on? It's mind-blowing, <laughs> definitely very humbling, and it's just unbelievable. I'm like, yeah. I feel like I'm returning back to something that inspired me to yeah. be who I am today, and now I could do that for others, and it's very intimidating for one, yeah. but I'm glad to be a part of it, because I love drawing comic books. I love being a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I love looking at a script and being like, how do I interpret this to make it really right. cool and fun? And that's and, my job. And then once they find that, they find a whole, I mean, you open up an entire universe for them as well. And I want you to know that one of the places where that, bre that gap between literacy and being able to read happened is at my house. Oh. And some of that is on comics that you have done, where, you know, I said, look, I know you can't read the words right now, but just look at the pictures. They'll tell a story. You know these characters. You can think, and then we'll fight through and we'll find the words together. So there were years where comic books were under attack. Can you believe this? As hurting children, comic book artists couldn't admit that they even made comic books, and now we're in a point where libraries and other people understand that it is one of the greatest tools uh, and can bridge this gap for literacy. Uh, in addition to just a love of beautiful pictures and fun characters. Now, who's your favorite art character to draw? I mean, obviously you're drawing one of them right now, a current favorite, but you had Supergirl. Who else were, you, were early ones for you? Um, a new favorite, which uh. when I started getting to know her, I did fall in love with her, is I like Jessica Cruz, the newest What's... Green Lantern in the DC Superhero Girl universe. Oh, say that one more time, because I couldn't Jessica hear over the... Jessica Cruz! Uh-huh. She is just... I like... Oh, yeah how yeah, yeah. She, she's learning to still come into her power. It's a yeah. new thing, she doesn't know what to do with it. Right. And as any skill that we learn, especially me as an artist, right. is you're very intimidated to use your powers, mm -hmm. whether that is creating or writing or whatever it might be. Yeah. And I think she relates the most to everyone. And that's why I like her personally. She's funny, but she's the most relatable to me. Well, I think one of the great things about Jessica as a character, and it kind of ties into what we're talking about, is that it's the inverse of her fear is her strength. Yeah. You know, you know, we all have these gifts and curses and there's a duality to life. And sometimes we realize that on the other side of our deepest fears is the level of strength and courage and bravery that we have. And here's a woman who goes from being trapped inside her house to now exploring the galaxies. Exactly. And we all want a cool... I, I have yeah. a Green Lantern ring, yeah. but it's not a Green Lantern ring. It's a different core. Well, you can like Green Lanterns just for the cool jewelry, right? I mean, they have the best rings, so... They do! Now, would you... What color lantern would you be? Uh, okay, so my reasoning for this uh -huh. is only because I really like... This is... I, I was a weird kid, guys. I'm telling you this right now. Uh -huh. Is I've always been a huge fan of zombies. Uh-huh. And the comic that got me into reading Green Lantern comics was actually Blackest Night. Sure. And I became obsessed with the Green Lanterns because of the Blackest Night. And they yeah. had zombie lanterns, guys. Yeah. Zombie lanterns. So I would like to be a Black Lantern just so I could be a zombie. 
Now we I don't know why. We have a very, we won't even ask the trivia question, we'll just give you the anecdote. It has came out that, uh, you know, what, black, it, it's William Hand, right? So, Sorry? Oh. Which is actually a reference to Batman co-creator Bill Finger. So that's, you know, that's the heavy, you know, uh, lineage that that character comes down from. So yeah. a Black Lantern, okay. So you're going to have to do some fun work for our deceased. I think we'll have to get you on our, uh, our zombie <laughs> that comic. That actually generally scared me. I yeah. got the hands, my hands on the first issue. By the end of it, I'm like, I'm actually genuinely scared of The this Black book. Ring is the best of the goth rings. We'll give you that. Yeah. That okay, so that's your color scared. lantern. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is turning out beautiful. So Thank you. When I you're... Trying to re so I don't color DC superhero girls. My amazing right. color is still color. So I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Yeah. And I think I got the colors close. Well, that's okay. This is uh, artist my interpretation is allowed. It right. um, it's looking beautiful. Thank you. Uh -huh. Definitely you, having fun. And the medium itself. I mean, it, you, when you're doing other stuff, I think I assume you're doing stuff digitally, or do you go off of pencils first? Um, I do. Mm -hmm. Depending on um, my deadline, um, I mm -hmm. work m mainly digital just because it's super easy. Mm -hmm. But I do other stuff traditionally. Like I did uh, one of the covers I did for DC Superhero Girls that I did traditionally just mm -hmm. because I love the paper. Sorry, yeah. I, I, I somehow hit this along the way. So I think I'll always love traditional just for the feeling of it. Right. But for speed and efficiency, digital is definitely the easiest. Well, it's a, a, yeah, it's yeah. amazing how many people use it at different tools at different stages. Some people are constructing straight from digital. Some people are throwing in pencils and light box images in and cleaning them up. Uh, it's sort of hard to avoid a digital touch thing, but it does give you a lot more control and ability to adjust. Yes, especially but you're still when working. you work on licensed properties, yeah. it's definitely nice to be able to do changes quickly. Yeah. Because, guys, you got to get cool comics coming out on time, and I want to make sure of that always. I know. It's the most important thing. Come out on time. You know, deliver. <laughs> okay, so we're going to give this out. Is that right? You, you're okay with me giving this oh, away? Oh, please do. Okay. I, I, this needs a good home. I'm just okay. adding a bit of a magic. Mm-hmm. With these cool markers. I well, love it, these. It was magical markers. to me already. I mean, this is, I mean, this, by the way, this is a real thrill for me as well. I mean, I read the comics, I enjoy the characters, but to actually get to meet the artists who create the work that you love, to actually see them, you know, not just see their stuff, but see them put stuff together, I mean, it's a real thrill. Usually I have a sparkle paint to add the sparkles in her hair, but you yeah. guys know how I'm, I just mentioned how unorganized I am with my messy cases. Uh -huh. Totally left the sparkles. So that's in the other travel cases, the Sorry. magic uh, sparkle wand that comes through it. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we tried. So okay. we, could, we could just say we're done, mm -hmm. and then some awesome person can take this. Oh. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and this means you're signed. done, guys, is yeah. when you sign it. That's it? Now it's done? Okay. It's done. Excellent. All right, well, let me see. take this away. Let All me... Right. Uh, you gotta cool it off, right? Cool it off there for a second. I'm gonna have to move this away so you guys don't huh? see my hotel. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I need a car to get this out of the pad. And as much as I want you guys to know where I'm staying, I'd rather uh -huh. not. Oh, yeah, that, you know, this is broadcast on big uh, screens <laughs> and everything else. So, uh, yeah, they'll be over at your. There okay. we go. Now you can grab it. All right. Are you two together? Okay. Oh, can I grab a picture of it for myself? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I got two Wonder Women. Yeah. You guys are so cute! Yeah. Woohoo! Congratulations! By the way, let me just say that I'm really glad that they're together because that was going to be a battle royale over that <laughs> that I didn't want to see. Um, Agnes, anything else we should talk about what you're working on right now? Um, uh, it was safe now for me yeah. to say, because it just got announced like a week or two ago, that I am working on the next issue of DC Superhero Girls Powerless that yeah. comes out after uh. Yancey's amazing issue that will be out this October, guys. So okay. look for Yancey's issue this October, and then a few months later, mine will come out sometime after that. That I don't know. Yeah. That's beyond my head. But yeah, look forward to it, guys. It's super awesome. Awesome. Well, it's an absolute pleasure meeting you. Uh, Thank Thank you. With everything. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Agnes Grabowska. Thank you, everybody.